What's up, everybody? Welcome to this week's episode of the Just Saying Podcast. I'm your host, Justin Martindale, and this week's guest, I'm so excited to have him here. Uh, favorite here at the Comedy Store, hilarious. You've seen him on America's Got Talent, which we will talk about that. Uh, what are you counting? You're counting how many things I get right. And your special on YouTube called Taylor Williamson Live at the Comedy Store. I knew it was that. It's Taylor Williamson, everyone. Hi, everybody. Yes. But what about Baby Betty? And Baby... Uh, and also, did you know that today is International Bring Your Dog to a Podcast Day? <laughs> did you know that? That's not a thing. I don't know. But why not? We're at the point now where people are just making things, so why not? Yes, it's it like it is. dress like a hot dog day. It is. You yeah, know, it why is. not? It is International Bring Your Puppy Day. We have podcast. our dogs here today. Taylor brought baby Betty. It was, it was Betty, but she's a baby forever. She is a baby. Forever baby. My forever baby <laughs> is running around here somewhere. Frida has joined me at um, Dad's Day uh, at the job. So she is running around here, so she's here. But how are you? I'm glad you're here. I'm we sorry. made it happen. Hey, um, this is great. We're doing it. Frida, did she come with the name Frida? She did come with the name Frida. Interesting mm -hmm. move to keep the name. It came, I respect that a it's lot. It's her name. And it just Frida. fits. And Frida... Um, oh, right. But we, your story is, you have a, a, a different kind of story. It's not, she's re you rescued her, but it wasn't a uh, from a shelter where they just no. give a quick a basic name. Close. Glendale. Um, yes. Yeah, so <laughs> I got her <laughs> oh. um, over Christmas break. We were dog sitting. All the our Armenian friend's dog. and hate mail. I love no, Armenia. I didn't I love... say anything. I just said Glendale. But that's uh... the traffic. <laughs> yeah. Glendale's known for traffic, not and Armenian. The people. Galleria Mall. <laughs> That's they, it. They had a shooting there, didn't they? A few Probably. Years ago? What's today? <laughs> Who knows? I love the Armenians. I do too. But like, no, it was an elderly lady and she um, was trying to rehouse this dog. And our friend and her had like this weird serendipitous moment on a plane. And they connected and they bonded. And she called her up and was like, do you know anybody who would like to have her? And we were dog sitting our friends, King Charles at the time. And we were like, are we getting a dog? And the next day we went and picked her up. And yeah, her name's Frida after the artist, Frida Callow. Frida Callow? <laughs> after the after the chips, Frito Lays. Not Frito Lays, the lady with the unibrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I love the movie Coco and Frida was in that as well, the movie. That's great. Her name's Betty because the name she came up with was Cookie Crumbles. And I already have enough trouble trying to convince women that I'm attracted to women that I decided that uh, Cookie Crumbles is not helpful for what I'm going for. Yeah. So I chose Betty. Cookie Crumbles is... It's a lot. Well, and that also sounds like dog show, but like snobby dog show. You know what I mean? I mean, she is snobby dog show. It's like, it's like, this is runs with <laughs> tail between its legs. You know, it's like. Sounds like a Native American dog. And that, thank that you. That's troublesome to you. I know. God, everything's problematic. <sighs> you got canceled 12 times. And it's the first five minutes of the podcast. But you know what? That's how it goes in Hollywood. Dude, what? how many people do you know who've been canceled recently who are thriving? It's I the know. way to go. You have to cancel and thrive now. That's the I used to don't get canceled. Now it's like you canceled a little yeah, bit. Yeah. Well, and also like your old girlfriend Heidi Klum, and I don't mean old. Oh, God. canceled again. Just past girlfriend. No, she didn't die either. Now I'm saying that we're changing the show called Just Cancel. Former girlfriend Heidi Klum says, mm -hmm. "One day you're in, and one day you're out." Does she say that? Yeah, Project Runway. Oh, we don't watch each other's art. We Can I mention Project Runway without Heidi Klum on it anymore? Is she not on it anymore? No. You know why? Because she got canceled. Did she get canceled? Did she? <laughs> no, she didn't. Wait, she who's just... on it now? Who took her spot? I think Tim Gunn and Christian Siriano. Didn't he make uh, Suicide Squad and uh, Guardians of the Galaxy? Who? James Gunn. Not t Tim Gunn. Tim Gunn is the designers. You have five oh, minutes. He's great. Make it work. Yeah, that one. <laughs> wait, who else do you do? Wait, wait, wait. Do Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> I don't know Gilbert. <laughs> you can't do Gilbert so Godfrey. So random. Um, That's the show. I can't even think of things to say. I That's mean, pretty good. Oh, this this is the show. Okay. Now do, um, <laughs> do Joe Pesci. I don't know Joe Pesci. He's from Home Alone 2. I know Boston, Joe Pesci, but I'm like, Joe Pesci's like, what do you want for? I don't, it's the worst. Uh, okay, the kid's home. Let's go take all of his money. I don't know. That's a, that's one of my favorite quotes from the film. That was really 
Can you do? Um, <laughs> this is great. Can you do Larry Hagman from uh, Dallas? Yeah, I was going to say Bewitched. Wait, Larry Hagman from was he Bewitched or I Dream of Genie? No, I can't do that one. I can't All think right. of that one on the top of my head. But very, very specific impression. Listen, I was just, you know... Just pull it out from the vault. Can you do a John Cena impression? Are you asking me to get naked right now? I mean, am I? <laughs> <laughs> Let's get into the Oscars, shall we? Did you watch them? I watched a few clips of it. I didn't watch the whole thing. So I think that's where entertainment's going now. We're just, just clips. Just show us the highlights. We don't have the time. First of all, they, they started at four o'clock here. They started an hour early. We also had daylight savings coming in and being like, you're getting an extra hour. You're welcome. But let's talk about the five most awkward moments at the Oscars. Okay. I was meh about the whole thing. Did you watch this woman? Uh, there was actually two women who actually fell on their asses on the red carpet. No. Um, these two, I mean... First of all, the shoes, that's why you fell. Um, these two women, who is it actually? Uh, this is actually Kirsten Dunst. She fell on a statuette and uh, Lisa Koshi or Liza Koshi, who fell on the red carpet because they handled the moments with the most grace and I'm not in the position to judge since, okay, whatever. This is like someone reading this off. So Lisa or Liza Koshi and Kirsten Dunst fell on the red carpet. And of course, everyone's like, look at these women busting ass on the red carpet. And I think it's awesome. You love that they fell? I like that. Th I mean, I like that there's flaws. You know what I mean? Like, like, I think it's just like, oh, you know, oh, they fell. Gross. You know, I'm like, I don't understand. I mean, listen, I love, I'll watch p videos of people falling for like six hours on it's YouTube. It's funny. But at the same time, as a comedian, we, comedian, we've been doing this a long time. The way humans react at like if a server drops a drink, and everyone, oh, uh -huh. oh, like everyone acts like whoa, you know, everyone needs to calm down a little bit. I'm not taking away the humor and watching elegant uh, movie stars fall on the ground. Yeah. It's perfect, but I think people need to relax a little bit. It's human. Yeah, you fall, but also, how much do we hate people when a a, a restaurant server drop something and there's that one guy's like ew like you wouldn't do that to you know Kirsten Dunst falling <laughs> you're like yeah look at you she's like can someone help me no bitch you're on your own like I don't, I don't like claps that were, are not I think there needs to be a show of people are clapping I don't like claps on airplanes I I, I resent those like when you land yeah and people clap yeah I don't like that they don't deserve it no they get paid too much money they don't deserve a clap but also that's how it's supposed to work yeah like you don't get like you did it yay but we're supposed to be funny though but I'm not gonna clap on a plane but then why do you clap for an audience by your your because that is presentation flying in the air like we're in a tube right yeah oh that's fair yeah. Like if it was more open, like if it was like an invisible plane and we actually like got to see around and be like, holy shit, like that's performance. Oh, interesting. Yeah. That's actually a good idea if there was like a museum on a plane and you walk up and down the aisles and you look at people mm -hmm. and then they fly, then you clap at the end. I think you're onto something. <laughs> you, you, We came up with it together, I buddy. Know. There's a lot of things that get pitched at this table. You'd be surprised. You'd be like, oh yeah, that'd be a good idea. And then watch like next week it'll be... Wait, I came, I came up with it by myself. I own 100% of that you idea. You do. You do. Wow. Well, and here's another thing that was awkward. John Cena's streaker bit. I saw this part. <sighs> this is why I believe in the Illuminati. <laughs> <laughs> I have never been like, like, you know, there's some weird Hollywood underground with goat heads and, you know, at midnight they pay their initiation fee. But something was online and it made me go, I could totally see that. Like this was his initi uh, initiation into the Illuminati. Because this might be his first time at the Academy Awards. And you have to be naked on television at the Oscars, which is the actor's nightmare. You know the actor's nightmare? No. The actor's nightmare was a, um, a play, I think by Christopher Durang, where... Um, this actor is like the worst fear is being naked on stage. And so they called it the actor's nightmare. Oh yeah. So, and I think this was like a dare, but they threw in the like, Oh, we had a streaker at the Oscars back in the day. He looked good. You're kind of right. Cause 
he was probably told because he's not in any. I mean, he's in Barbie actually for like a cameo. Yeah. But so I guess he's in that. But like, it's really pushing to be like, we'll have John Cena as a presenter. And I'm speaking as a lifelong John Cena supporter, pro mm-hmm. wrestling fan, you know? So you're right. He was probably told, hey, we wrote a joke that gets you into an, introducing a thing. Otherwise, you're not, you have no reason to be here. Right. And he's probably like, because he's a TV star, right? His biggest thing is probably his TV show. Well, he's like the new rock. I mean, respect. Yeah. yeah. The, the Rock's been like number one box office for a de- decade. So he's like the new. So John Cena is the new, Yeah, for sure. And he's funny. And, you he, know. John he, Cena went the comedic route, which is interesting. Yeah. Like, uh, the, but Dave Batista, also pro wrestling star, he went that kind of bad guy action, and cool action. Yeah. But dramatic, like thoughtful roles. Like he's yeah. like special, different. And, um, but John Cena uh, was probably told. We'll have you on, but the only way you're not—it's not like he was hired as a presenter and then he was told, "What do you want to do?" Here's a pitch. It was it was get naked, get naked immediately, and be here or you're not here. Yeah, that was and a everyone. Long I mean, I gave you. Whew, and that—I mean, no pun intended. Took some balls, I think. <laughs> How terrifying! I think it's terrifying. But he's but he he dresses like that exactly. He's got the body for it, like show off the goods, whatever. Of course, everyone was like, "Was he really naked?" And then they showed this weird like. Yeah. Forever baby diaper on him, <laughs> which was like just tape on his nuts and then it went up his ass, which I don't know if that's what they use like in sex scenes, like the modest coaches and yeah. stuff being like, oh, you got to put on the forever baby diaper and then go to town. But, you know, I thought it was OK. It was. But was he inducted into the Illuminati? We will never know. You can ask him. Why- I should. I'll have him on like in a couple weeks and be like, so. Where's your goat mask? You know, <laughs> is it on the wall? Is it in the closet? Where is it hiding? The third uh, most awkward moment was when Billie Eilish and Cynthia Erivo and her brother Phineas and Ariana Grande crashed a live moment. So this woman was, uh, she was the Academy of Arts and Sciences uh, uh, leader or, or whatever. Her name was Janet Yang. She was talking about like, oh, this is what we do here. And these guys were walking off stage and they were like, they walked into the shot and Billie Eilish like started scaling the wall. They were just kind of like, uh, it was perfect. It was like, you know, the young kids at the Oscars not knowing what to do. So it was great. And Billie Eilish, my God, two-time Oscar winner. She is 22 years old. It's insane. Isn't that crazy? So talented. You know her parents were groundlings? Are groundlings? That makes sense. Yeah, one of the mom was a teacher, wasn't she? I believe that, I, yeah, I'm play, but I believe they're both performers from groundlings history. I, at least one of them is, but I think they both are. Like how yeah. special she's like from she's like adjacent to us. Yeah. And yeah. she's I just take credit for her. So you do you're the reason? Yeah. Yeah. You know, I took a class. You're you're part of me now. Yeah, I didn't even take a class. She's just part of you? I just yeah, she's a comedy and in business mm, side. Oh, you know? you're just in adjacent? Yeah. You're yeah. welcome, Billy. Yeah. You're, welcome, you're welcome, world. You're in our circle now. We kind of, we deserve to. We uh, created we, we Billy sh- Eilish. We should have like a week with the Grammy. <laughs> or what did she win? Uh, the Tony Award. The Oscar. The, uh, yeah, mean, the Tony Award. Yeah, that one. Frida, um, Frida loves me. She, she is. Loves she loves Betty. Yeah, she loves Betty, too. Uh, number two is Emma Stone reacting to Jimmy Kimmel's poor things joke. Now, some people are saying that she said she called him a prick. Um, he pretty much, they, they showed a clip of poor things, and they were like, this is all we could show. Have you seen poor things? I saw it, yeah. I saw it last night. There's a lot going on. It's a lot. Yeah. Did you like it? This is exactly. one. Of those, this is one of the things problems I have. Like doing these, I'm putting myself out there doing these podcasts. I'm grateful to be here, but mm-hmm. like you say, like I still plan on being like a big deal, you know, in this mm-hmm. business. So you love everything. And you support I'm just it. a big. I thought it was a really special movie, and it was they went for it, and they Hold on. Come and here. they. And, and they got there. I just feel yeah. like I just admire everything they did. And I, I just, I just, it's hard to hang out with people like you who are so dark and negative and <laughs> things, you know, like I just thought it was beautiful art. Dark and negative. Like I was so special and I thought mm-hmm. it just showed that there's so many metaphors that you missed. And uh, what, uh, please list them because I would love to know what metaphors I missed because I think I made my own metaphors <laughs> watching that movie. <laughs> I am all for like artistic approach and storyline, but that whole movie was just Emma Stone getting railed. I know. And it was so much. I was just kind of like, what is this? What am I watching? Yeah. Um, And I just thought it was just very, very bizarre. Come here. 
You found it to be Did bizarre? Did you think it was weird too? I, you thought yeah. the movie was bizarre? I thought it was weird. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen in my it life. It was so weird. And like, I just felt bad because everyone was like rooting for Lily Gladstone. They're like, oh my gosh, she was so great in Flowers of the uh, Killer Moon or whatever. <laughs> Killers of the Flower Moon. And like, and then Emma won and she and people were like, this was the, uh, Emma even said this was the best um, character she's ever played. So of course, like afterwards, we were like, we haven't seen it. Let's watch it. We watched uh, it. We were like, what is this? <laughs> <laughs> like it was so bizarre. I can't. Like it was like this weird. It was what was it? Like it was like Frankenstein meets Tim Burton meets this woman learning the world meets the Drod Carmichael show. Half of it was in black and white. Half of it was in color. Like it, it won like best makeup and hair, best costuming. Like it was artistically very fun to watch and look. But it was the underlying story. I was like, this is really dark and morbid. It's the same way I feel like I went to the Guggenheim a couple weeks ago <clears throat> in New York City. Like, uh -huh. let's check out some modern art. Be a you know a uh, connoisseur. Connoisseur. Is that mm. Like, yeah, there's another word, but you know, just like be who I am. Just like someone who really cares about a modern person of art. the city. Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> and I was I walked around and I'm like dying the whole time. I'm like, what is this? But it must be. Then I go, you know what? I'm not. I'm basic, uh -huh. and this is clearly special art, and art isn't supposed to all be, it's not going to McDonald's and getting French fries. This is like something unique, and yeah. you're supposed to feel different things, you know? So then I go, like, I watch this movie, and I go, I have two thoughts. I go, okay, this must be special because everyone signed on to do this. And my sincere thoughts, like this must be, this must, this must be brilliant mm -hmm. and interesting. And the polarizing, like in stand up, if you're polarizing, that means you're doing something right. If everyone likes it, you're doing something wrong. Fair. You want a couple of people, whatever. But then my other thought is, this is all bullshit. Because if I wrote this script and I gave it to my agent, they would drop me. <laughs> Fair. But this guy gets it. They're like, this is brilliant. Right. Dollar signs, dollar signs. And I remember seeing the 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 billboard for it because it it gave me big fish vibes. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was like, oh, it's kind of like quirky and cartoony. And, and then I like watched it last night and I'm like, like my friend had like an 11 year old daughter and we we're like, uh, uh you pull that curtain up in the loft. You are not watching this with us. Like, no, 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 no. This is not like Emma Stone being funny in La La Land. Like it was like a lot. And I can handle sex and you know all that, but I was I was like, okay, okay, let's. What are we doing? But also, there's a kind of like I was watching, and I was like, is this offensive? Is it this, was. Is it terribly offensive to people who are offended I don't know, by things? But it, then it's I clearly went, not. Where did I go? Illuminati vibes. Because <laughs> I was like, why is this woman killing herself? Spoiler alert. You know, like. We're, she's pregnant. You can't we're, do that. You can't cut that out. No, we don't. This is a savage show. This is a savage show. Uh, the, if you haven't seen the movie yet, it's your fault. They won the award like yesterday. But the movie's been out. You've had a whole award been, season. Oh, that's brutal. I still don't know what happens at the end of Lost. If you tell me right now, I will never talk. I will walk off the show right Wait, now. Wait, the show Lost? Do not. I'm not even kidding. I will. I will steal your dog. <laughs> Do not even tell me. I don't want to know the end of things I'm never going to see. Well, then why does it matter? Uh, why does anything matter, pal? You don't want to know what happens? Don't tell me. I will fight you. I will be her. I will, I will, I will put, add you to my list of people in this building who I, I don't like. <laughs> I and you want to three people who is not on that list. So it's up to you, sir. You, you, wow, Let's you, tell him. No. <laughs> you enjoy, oh, you like ruining things. No, 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 I the, don't. No, no, no. Are you like me as the Jewish kid who wants to tell people Santa doesn't no, exist? But it, no, well, no. Does the 11-year-old know Santa doesn't exist? The what? The 11-year-old you hung out with? Do they know Santa's not real? Yeah. Oh, okay. I was going to say, like, I, I could see you being the guy that, like. But now you just told all the listeners with children <laughs> in their car that Santa's not real. So well, who's, it's a Jewish who's guy dark who's, and it's, evil now? It's a Jewish guy who's jealous he doesn't come to his house. Yeah, that's fair. Also, I never had a chimney either. No, it's totally, I, I get it. But, like. Um, I can see you enjoying. I don't, I don't see you. I don't like to spoil things, but I'm also. The person who, like, I get excited. Like, if someone doesn't know something, I'm like, oh, God. Like, I'm like that Sue character on SNL, Kristen Wigger. She's like, 
Oh my God, it's going to happen. Like, that's totally me. Oh my God, she's going to come in here and be surprised. <laughs> I feel like you would enjoy being hired by parents who, when they feel like it's time to let their kids know Santa's not real. I don't think, I don't think you would ruin it. No, that's Matt Reif on the internet. That's what he does to like OnlyFans models. <laughs> like, God, what a dick. Um, I think he's great, by the way. I just oh, want to say. Oh, okay. Yeah. <laughs> you just I'm love sure. lifting people up. Illumina and Illuminati, <laughs> I'm here for you. Yeah, cut to. At Taylor Comedy. Um, you must bring cookie crumbles to an altar. <laughs> what? Her name is Betty. <laughs> I'll change her name. Illuminati. I will I will sacrifice. Look, you're actually offering up your dog right now. Illuminati is yours. Oh, take her. <laughs> That's the like. Is that how they talk? Yeah, I've dabbled. No, I'm kidding. Um, Why did you have to say I'm kidding? That means it's real. <laughs> Look, this is an Illuminati situation. Mm -hmm. Look, the way the dog is positioned on his lap means. <laughs> can I give you a revelation dog? has begun? <laughs> can I give your dog the greatest compliment sure. I can give a dog? She looks like AI. She is. She's so beautiful and perfect. She, she looks like AI. She's a little hologram. Are you a hologram? A little Tamagotchi. Oh, do you know what Tamagotchi so means? What? Something dark and evil. What is it? Tamago means egg. And friend is Tomodachi. So egg friend? Egg friend. I don't like it. <laughs> forever baby. It's the new forever baby. Um, and the number one most awkward moment was Jimmy Kimmel's opening monologue because, of course. I disagree. I, th I genuinely watched it, and I genuinely thought he did the perfect job. I saw people saying that he bombed. Like what? He didn't bomb. I didn't think he bombed. I Actually, you know what I did like about him is that he was a little biting. I like that he kind of went like a little Ricky Gervais a little bit. I thought he did a wonderful job. He did. No, everyone. You know what I did think what was awkward, but I loved it was when he read Trump's tweet. Yeah, where he's like, "This is the worst thing." He's like, "All right, well, cool." If if this former president, that was such. I mean. What a setup. Yeah. That was so great. Hey, Just Sayers, this episode is brought to you in part by Factor. Factor is a ready-to-eat meal delivery service that are pre-prepared, chef-crafted, and dietitian approved that are delivered right to your door. You have over 35 options to choose from, including keto, calorie smart, vegan, and veggie, and plenty more. There's even more to enjoy with over 55 nutrition-packed add-ons that help you make your weekly meal planning even more delicious. So get started today with Factor. Factor's meals are so delicious and they are so ready in only two minutes of your time. And these are restaurant quality meals, you guys. I'm serious. I, I'm amazed that this food cooks as good and tastes as good as it does cooked in a microwave. Uh, they've got snacks, smoothies, so many more. They've got wellness shots. What's even great is that Factor is less expensive than takeout and every meal is dietitian approved to be nutritious and delicious. So you know what that means? No mess, no prep. It's all there for you. Factor meals are 100% ready to heat up and eat, so there's no prepping, cooking, or cleanup needed. Head to factormeals.com slash saying50 and use code saying50 to get 50% off. That's code saying50 at factormeals.com slash saying50 to get 50% off. One of my most awkward moments was Becky G., performing the fire inside from the movie flame and hot mm -hmm. <laughs> so, can i tell you that whole sentence i'm this is where i feel 900 years old that entire sentence i have no idea what any of that means what becky g it's, starting it's, with it's, becky it g sounds like a mad libs it pretty much is like the world now is just a mad lib episode so becky g performs with diane warren who diane warren is you know phenomenal songwriter um but the song was called The Fire Inside. It was nominated for Song of the Year for the Ava Longoria-directed film Flame and Hot, which is about the invention of Flame and Hot, the Flame and Hot brand. Cheetos, everything's Flame and Hot now. And it's the is song was called The Fire Inside. So this girl is singing at the Oscars about hot Cheetos, and I was kind of here for it. The only thing that made it even more awkward was that these uninvited children came up on stage with Becky G and they were all holding hands like we are the world. And it was like, what is this? And Becky G was like, Argh! like she was she was kind of mad that she had to like share the spotlight with these kids, these un these uninvited children. And yeah, they didn't earn it. Huh? They didn't earn it. I don't know. We don't know where these kids came from.
But yeah, like Maybe the flaming ate. hot. There was a ring of fire. It was pretty much like everyone's butthole after they ate a whole bag of fire Cheetos. <laughs> and she's up there. She looked great. Um, they should have like forced her to eat one. <laughs> she's like, no, she doesn't yeah. do it. They're like, you have to. Yeah. This is her induction into the Illuminati. You have to <laughs> sing a song about Cheetos at the Oscars. And she's like, fine. And then these like children showed up. And can we just look at the awkward like ending? Because just look like, okay, so she's like, ah, flaming hot Cheetos. <laughs> oh, look. And then she's like, oh. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah, did they? Did flaming they... hot Cheetos. And then they bow. <laughs> and then Chester cheated. Yeah, and look at her. She's like, yay, we did it. Ooh. So that was my favorite awkward moment. Wow. That was just, of all, you picked that one. I thought it was kind of, no, it just made me laugh because I was like, here's this girl who's like, the song from this movie, it did well. It was like a, a sleeper hit. Yeah. Um, but it just made me laugh because like, think about it. You're like, I'm going to sing this song about the Cheeto movie. <laughs> You yeah. know, and then Billie Eilish is up there, you know, for Barbie and talking about her depression. And she's like, well, my song's about Cheetos. <laughs> yeah. And on that note, here's the 20 <laughs> best and worst dressed celebs at the 2024 Oscars. <laughs> no, I didn't. Um, I love I love the fashion. I'm probably going to talk more about the fashion on my Patreon. Um, but did you have anybody that you were like, oh, that looks good. Are you a big like? I didn't. I didn't. Pay you didn't care. I, don't know. I didn't watch the whole thing. So I don't know. So. These are just some of them. America Ferrera and Versace. Everyone kind of wore like a, a nice tight fitting dapper outfit. I thought Coleman Domingo looked fantastic in Louis Vuitton. Uh, Billie Eilish went to school in Chanel. Um, let's <laughs> Betty, see. The baby. She, this one was my favorite. Anya Taylor-Joy and Dior Couture. Like, oh, she looks so good. She looks so, like, regal. French couture elegance, lots of jewels, diamonds. The worst dress for me... Um, let's see. Hold on. Let's go back. We'll do Emma Stone. Yeah, Emma Stone was great. Uh, Zendaya was fantastic. Lupita Nyong'o was great. So see, it's very like, very silhouette. And everyone is now on Ozempic, so there really isn't that much shape <laughs> to the dresses, but they right. looked good. Um, Ryan Gosling looked fantastic in Gucci. Um, yeah, Haley Steinfeld was in that. Oh, that great. Florence Pugh. Florence Pugh's got some curves. She's really pretty. Um Divine Joy was in Louis Vuitton. I loved her. I loved her, those big old pom poms. And Ariana Grande was in, you know, Wicked Pink. And uh, Cynthia Riva was in the Alphaba Green. So it was pretty cool. Baby Betty's wearing her Bill Cosby sweater. <sighs> really? That's You're going to mention Bill Cosby on the podcast? <sighs> I'm sorry. You're Who's right. dark and negative now? You're right. Wait, what happened? <laughs> Wait, what happened? Why are you saying that? You can't mention... That's problematic. You don't like The Cosby Show? Do you? Have you seen Ghost Dad? Canceled. <laughs> I honestly... What do you think? We all got to get, like, a little bit canceled. A little like, bit canceled. Like, it can't be, like... No one's perfect. No, they don't want that. They don't want perfect. But people are always saying stuff about people on... Um, sorry, that was, like, Velcro in the microphone. People are always... Um, have their two sets. That's what we do. Like, people say, don't read the comments, don't do all that, but, you know, people are always going to have an opinion about something. Um, and I have an opinion about this one. Jennifer Lawrence and Dior Couture, eh, wasn't for me. Um, and I'll talk more about that. But my worst dress, Melissa McCarthy. Melissa McCarthy she was looks wearing... Great. She looks amazing. No, that's Zendaya. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that is not Melissa I'm McCarthy. Sorry. I'm sorry. Melissa it. McCarthy was wearing who? Christian Siriano from Project Runway. That's great. No. It was not good. I could I it looked too I didn't like it. It was like clown school, matronly, like not that one. Where is it? It was like this weird fuchsia red. It looked like a Valentine's Day nightmare. It was just not it's this one? Is no, it that one? one? Yeah, I think it's this one. Yeah. It just looked like Rodeo Queen. I mean, she's you're talking about one of my comedy sisters. You know what? She's and... my comedy sister as well. <laughs> and I have to tell her no sometimes. She needs she needs the gays to like 
uh, really help her out because it 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 wasn't it wasn't it for me. And I thought that whole number with her and Octavia Spencer was so weird and like it just didn't hit and land. And it was just like, mm. did she sing a song? No, they they just came yeah, out there yeah. and were like. It just, it was like, oh, the teleprompter's on. Wow. Like, it was, yeah, didn't work. Oh, no. Um, all right, let's move along. We've got, that's my Oscar coverage. I thought it was, you know, it was fine. I loved the Ken moment. I, I watched thought that. that was great. That was so good. Because, it, like, failing reminder for your wonderful audience, he was a Mickey Mouse Club Mickey kid. Mouse Club. He knows, he's like a full entertainer. Yeah, and can sing. That's Still really impressive. It. Yeah. Do you I do all that? He, yeah. Do you, Billy? Did I what? Do you do all that? Sing? Are you a full entertainer? No. Can I tell you, I'm the least likely person to... to do karaoke? To, I, 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 I can't do karaoke. Yeah. But, um, like, I see Jimmy Fallon, all this stuff, and, like, I really have, like... Like, I thought Jerry Lewis was so special, like, I mean, as a human, not as an artist, but um, that's a joke you make when you hear people are terrible, but they're talented, you know? Oh, it's got it. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, but he could do all the things. He's choreographed, he uh, sang, he he directed, he wrote, he acted, he did comedy. And like, Jimmy Fallon kind of does that kind of thing. I think it's a, a really impressive thing. Ryan Gosling could be one of our greatest comedians of our time. It is interesting, too, because if he, to. if he, he just, like, pops in. We're like, God, really, Ryan Gosling, really? <laughs> like T.I., yeah. now Ryan Gosling. Yeah, thanks. Oh yeah, T.I., yeah, that was weird. Um, Another wait, co comedy brother in my... Yeah. To me, you and T.I. are like close now. Comedy brother. <laughs> comedy brother. Do you get it? It's, I it's would love it if Brian Gosling just had like a, a musical career. He never did. He was never Justin Timberlake. He never had like a solo career. He just stuck with acting. He and, never... Uh, uh, she's, look at her. She is she's, Simba on Pride Rock right now. Like straight up just... <laughs> um, well, here's what happened. I went to the Madonna concert. It was great. Well, you, you were in the wheelchair? That was me in the wheelchair, yeah. Did you hear about that? That was you. Oh, my God. That's so awkward. If you don't know what happened at the Madonna concert, that did happen over the weekend. This woman, Madonna's been here for like five days. She's performed all week. I think today's actually her last day. But I heard rumors. There was rumors that she doesn't show up until 9.30. One night she showed up at 9.40. So the show is supposed to start at 8.30. So people have been planning accordingly, like when she shows up. Um... She didn't show up till 10.15. Stop it. 10.15. No opener? No opener. Stop it. We got there at 9.30. Like, we got into our seats. Knowing she'd be late. You came knowing an hour she'd be late. late. And we're, like, sitting there. I run into Matt Rogers, and he's like, yeah, we just got tickets, like, a minute ago, like, two hours ago. And he... Like the gays were there, like people were there, and I was, I, and it was a Thursday night, and it's already ten o'clock, and I'm like, kind of tired, yeah. But it's Madonna, so I did it, <laughs> and we had our former, our, our, we had a guest on Bob the Drag Queen who is opening for her. Bob killed it; it was so much fun. Wow, she had all the air off. Wow, that's no amazing. air on, no air, no AC. Where was this? The Kia Forum. She was like, we're not going to have AC. We're going to sweat. I'm like, is this legal? Can she announced it proudly. Yeah. That's insane. She's like, the AC's off. I'm getting hot. Yeah. You know, and people were like, yeah, the AC's off. Make sure to dress accordingly. But also, here's the weird thing. I know Madonna, like, in my head, right? I grew up with Madonna. I've loved Madonna. <laughs> but when you realize that Madonna is like, you know, 65 years old. Right. And you're looking at some of her fans who are probably in their 70s with canes and like walking around and you're like, oh, they're, they're powering through. If they can do it, so can I. Yeah. It is kind of crazy to see like Madonna fans with like canes and, you know, they're older now and they're like, yeah, <laughs> like it's cool to see them party. But like it was, we didn't get home until like two o'clock in the morning. That's insane. Yeah. The show ended at like 1230, but she did it. She showed up. But at one of her shows, she did look at somebody and go, why aren't you standing up? And the guy was like, I, I'm in a wheelchair. She's like, oh, yeah, she made sorry. Whole, glad you're here. Didn't even say thank you. That's, She's kind of mean. Yeah, it seems like it. It's got to be so odd. I mean, insane to be like one of the most iconic 
pop stars of all time, mm-hmm. which means you're the most iconic people of all time, just because of whatever how life works. And then she's not relevant anymore. And then she's one of my comedy sisters. So she is a comedy I, sister. I will deny that yes. I said this. Uh, yeah, yeah. Madonna, I loved um, Rosie. Rosie O'Donnell's a comedy sister, and she's right. sisters with Rosie, so she's in my comedy family. So I love Madonna. Yeah, and we should hang out. And um, but I I got to go to the Grammys last year. And she came out. By the way, no more. It's bizarre. Oh, like, the face, the before the surgery face. I, I'm just saying that she walked out there, and then the crowd. There's no warm up guy saying it's the most. It's, it's the worst produced. I mean, I'd, I'd love to be the part of the Grammys, comedy brothers and sisters. Mm-hmm, and- mm-hmm. <laughs> God, I think you're a little bit canceled today. Yeah, you asked for it. You got it, buddy. Going after the Grammys. Yeah, no. Listen, but they don't have anyone like announcing like this. Right. Madonna's gonna come out. So when she comes out, let's cheer. Yeah. So she's out there, and everyone was like, "Why is the Baba Duke here?" <laughs> They were like we all remember zero like nothing. She had Whoa. nothing, and then she she has to tell them, "Hey guys, cheer for me! I'm Madonna." Yeah, and the crowd's still like half like whatever half. Well, like, no one on. recognized her. Yeah, she had that botched surgery with all the fillers that no one was like. Everyone was like, "Who's this woman?" Like no one knew that was Madonna. That's what happened. Yeah, and people were shocked when she was like, "It's me, Madonna," and people were like, "No, look at her, no, yeah, absolutely it's, it's not." Different Nosferatu. Uh, don't like it. Like that was life. not that was not her. And then like she got all that filler removed, and I think she had so many procedures done that that's why she got a bacterial infection and almost died because people were like, "Whoa, she kind of went overboard." Did you do the buccal fat removal? Have you done that yet? B- the buccal buccal fat buccal fat removal? Uh, no, I have not done buccal fat. Uh, if that's the move, yeah. Well, that's. Oh, there you go. You just have to do that. So you don't have to get it removed. Just do that all the time. This is how all the girls take their pictures nowadays. They're just like, you're really good at it. Hey, so all you got to do is just bite your buckle fat. Just bite your buckle fat. Um, that's all Madonna had to do is just go on the Grammys and be like, hello, everyone. I'm Madonna. Right. I was a little bummed that she did not say my favorite word that Madonna says. Um, I, Like a virgin. No, that, no. close. My favorite Madonna word is provocative. Oh. I love, it's just, uh, people think I'm too provocative. It's like, okay, Madonna, relax. <laughs> she did the thing. However, the best part of the night was Kylie Minogue jumped on, up, jumped up on the stage with her and the entire room exploded. At your show? At my Madonna show, yeah. Wow. My comedy sister, Kylie Minogue, yeah. showed up and let us have it. And it was so crazy because she's like, I want to bring up this next artist, Kylie Minogue, like it was just like the weirdest like intro and she just showed up and everyone was like, holy shit, really? Like she just won a Grammy this year for Padam Padam. And they, this is the first time that they've like performed together on stage. The weird part of it was they sang I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor. Yeah. I mean, why not though, right? Well, it was a whole thing about like International Women's Month, like she was like, or it was International Women's Day the next day. Kylie Minogue is a cancer survivor. Um, Madonna was a survivor because she almost died. Um, from the, the From the infection, yeah. Um, and so they got up there and, were, and Madonna had a guitar and she's like, I will survive as long as I know how to love. And we were like, what? What are you doing? And then Kylie was like, I just can't get you out of my head. And we were like, there it is. Thank you. <laughs> So it was fun. Do you think she gets paid for the guest spot? I don't know. But you know who else was there? Ali Wong. She performed? No. Ali Wong, who Ali and I have had talks about Madonna in the hallway. And Ali gets up on stage. Was she literally got on stage? Yes. So during Vogue, they do this whole thing with like the like the ballroom where everyone's like, ka, 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 and they judge them like 10 or chop, you yeah. know. And Allie's there, and I'm like, is that Allie? And it's Allie on the screen. She's doing the thing. And then I'm just like, my jaw's open, because yeah. I'm like, there's Allie with Madonna. And then I text Allie, and I'm like, tell me everything. She's like, next time I see you, it's on. I was like, okay, cool. So I can't wait to get all that. That's so funny. Like, I- what does Madonna smell like? What did she say to you? How did you get there? Yeah. I texted Kylie the same thing as like next time. Kylie we, Jenner. No, Kylie Minogue. Oh, like, Kylie Minogue. I was like, I was like, Kylie. I was like, next time I call her Kylie. I don't say her full name. Do you do that to people? You see that you say their full name when you hang out. It with It depends them? on the person. So I was like, Kylie, like text me deets when I see you. Like what it's like. Yeah. Like I'll like I'll 
say Bad Bunny's full name. <laughs> when you hang out with him? Well, yeah, but yeah. I'm not going to call him like Bad. Right. Or Hey Bon Bun, you know. You know he's a pro wrestler now, the Bad Bunny? Yeah. Yeah. And he's also suing a fan for posting his concert footage online. Yeah, that's a weird move. Here's the thing. I went to Madonna and I watched Madonna. I took a couple videos and like just a little story. I am not one of those people who sit there and record the whole damn concert. You're never going to watch this again. Right. Right? Right. I don't understand why people record concerts. I'm like, be in the moment, take your videos and then watch it. Like what, like, are you filming this? Or you're you're filming you're filming the show. You're watching it through your phone and not you're filming, IRL. You're filming this. It's kind of obnoxious. I don't watch these. <laughs> it's kind of narcissistic. I totally watch it. Just... <laughs> Cuts it like it gets released. I'm like, let's see how I do. <laughs> but like that's yeah. But I mean that's me. Perf- this is my performance space. You know. I I'm being. I'm but being, I'm not gonna. I'm being a silly goose. Yeah. But did, like if you went and saw Taylor Swift, like. Eight months from now, you're not going to be like, oh, let's go back to that memory, shall we? Right. Maybe you do. I don't know. I get the I I I get the urge to, but I also get that. What are you doing? What are you doing? Why are you here? It like, makes it so weird. Every, and then they watch that. The, 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 what's worse is watching through the camera. Yeah, like film it, be a weirdo, but why not look above the camera? Yeah, and do like a clip. You don't need to have like these long ass posts. You don't need to do every fucking song in the reel because like now people don't need to see it now you're yeah. just like spoiling it for everybody yeah, shame on all of you and this is and you know what that lost ended um, hey what don't you dare <laughs> don't you dare you know i dare you to no i'm not gonna do it you know what when i'm on stage with madonna and you text me i'm gonna be like who's this <laughs> you're just on stage one and i'm like this is how lost ends and you're like no oh, you, you just pee yourself um but oh my, wow what Sensitive issue. Peeing yourself. Sorry. I'm worried it's going to happen to me someday. I thought I did on Saturday. Yeah? Yeah. I think we're getting older, buddy, and our yeah. bodies change. I had to follow Tom Dreesen, and I thought I peed myself a little bit, and I didn't. But it felt like I did. But after I <laughs> but after I got off stage, I was like, did I pee myself? And I went and checked. I was like, no, I'm fine. It was weird. That's almost worse, isn't it? To like, what is you, it, like a ghost pee? I would rather have been like, oh, I peed myself then. Oh, my brain makes me think that there's liquid coming out of me. I think you have a worse medical issue than peeing yourself, pal. You know. Maybe that's why my dog's on my lap. She's like, I smell something's (laughs) wrong with you. And I'm like, it's fine. She loves me. (laughs) Is she Um, trained to do that? I don't know. Who knows? I don't know what she's doing. Hey, guys, did you know that learning actually makes a sound? It's true. Listen. And that's the sound of learning a new language with Babbel. I wanted to learn French this year, and with Babbel, I got to play a game. It was very fun, easy to learn, um, and it's all right there for you. It teaches you the basis of the language, uh, and you actually get to play a quiz. And if you get it right, you hear this sound. It's that easy. Babbel's quick 10-minute lessons are designed by over 150 language experts to help you start speaking a new language in as little as three weeks. And it's also designed to help you actually carry on real conversations within the language. Babbel's tips and tools are approachable, accessible, and rooted in real life situations. They are also delivered with con- uh, they are also delivered with conversation-based teaching so you're ready to practice what you learn out in the real world ASAP. Babbel has over 10 million subscriptions sold. Plus, all of Babbel's 14 language courses are backed by their 20-day money-back guarantee. Uh, Escooch and Just Sayers, here's a special limited time deal for our listeners. Right now, you guys can get 55% off your Babbel subscription, but only for our listeners. Only you guys at babbel.com slash just saying. Get 55% off at babbel.com slash just saying, spelled B A B B E L dot com slash just saying. Rules and restrictions may apply. So we have a couple more stories. Let's talk about James McAvoy. He revealed he injured himself holding a woman upside down during an orgy. Now, you and Heidi were in an orgy. Um, your season of America's Got Talent. Um, what was that? What, what was that like? Do you guys still talk, by the way, or no? Sir. Yeah. You're spreading a lot of unkind, untrue things, and I I, I just put a stop I to get that. it all from Reddit. 
What's great is most of these people don't know what you're talking about at all. Yes, just, they do. I was listen. I was runner up on America's Got Talent. Yeah. And then Heidi Klum's a judge. And if you look up on my YouTube, when you're done watching Taylor Williamson live at the Comedy Store, my comedy special, I do have my entire America's Got Talent journey. You can watch this Heidi Klum stuff in there. Um, we made love not with <laughs> other people, just just each other. Listen. Yeah. Um, Traditional. I, I see. I saw her. I saw her at the Grammys last year. Actually, you know what's oh, yeah? funny is like we're not close, you know. Yeah. But like, it's funny seeing somebody who's like so famous that you know for just being so famous, then you realize, oh, I know them, and then like, like she's walking by, and I'm like, like I had that with Howard Stern once at Sirius. So I'm like, oh, I know you enough to go, hey. Uh huh. But I still I feel like insane. I feel like an insane person. Like you don't want to be like. Hey, <laughs> like I've been with yeah. like you've been. Like, I've been with like really famous person, and then like people in the street go. Hey, they just want like their attention. It's like, Bzz. and you're like, oh, that's so and so. Like you don't care. It, it's insane. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But anyways, but like I saw, I'm cool enough to say hi. Then we say hi, and then we go. Okay, we did it, right? We did it. We had yeah. a good time. I would love to do more, but I get the vibe of like we're done. Yeah. You know? Back up. Yeah. She's got a taser in her purse. <laughs> Yeah, she's definitely like, she's like, oh, here he comes. Okay, let's just charge it up real quick. Yep, then the light screen. Okay, we're good. Oh, I taste my leg, Heidi. Um, well, James McAvoy has confessed that he managed to injure himself while in the middle of an orgy. The British star who was filming an uh, improvised X-rated scene for his latest movie, Turn Up the Sun, exclamation point. Wow, okay. Found himself decking it while he fell to the floor and smashed his knee while half naked and surrounded by his sweaty and disrobing co-stars. I'm telling you, the Illuminati is coming in hot this week. Speaking to Martin Comston and Gordon Smart on the Restless Natives podcast, McAvoy recalled the awkward moment that happened on set back in February. The second to last day of filming ended with about nine of us doing an orgy scene. All improvised fucking orgy scene. It was hardcore dancing. Everybody's on drugs. We had a lot of drunk loads of whiskey and there were loads of kissing, groping, and disrobing. It was a movie. Yeah. Uh, there's this amazing Spanish actor called Almundena Amor and we had to go at it with each other. We had it. We had to be funny with it but properly go for it and we were both in the same headspace. So we get to this improvised orgy and she's bigger than me. Okay. She's like 5'11". Oh, so you're tiny. McAvoy stands at 5'7". At one point was holding her upside down and we were doing some weird thing and somebody grabbed me on the back of the neck to start biting my neck. And then he lost his balance and then took a tumble. Well, what's the moral to the story here? Don't. I mean... You know what? Don't sneak up on someone at an orgy. Consent. You hear about these Hollywood Illuminati orgies? Mm hmm I think that was one. He was like, oh, it was a movie. I'm like, okay, James. <laughs> well, anything, if you have a camera, it's a movie. We're filming a movie this right now. This is a movie. Yeah, this yeah. is art. When, is this a... <laughs> <laughs> that was me getting railed, like Emma Stone. Justin. I know. Is this what? an orgy? I don't know, but here's another little fat, fun fact. This is the inside, the strange mix of passengers on an all-nude cruise. So a man who stripped down to set sail on a week-long nude cruise is speaking out about his fellow flesh-flashing passengers. The 67-year-old, who has not disclosed his identity, I'll tell you who it is, Madonna. No. Uh -huh. The 67-year-old, who has not disclosed his identity, took to Reddit to reveal he hit the high seas with his wife on a bare necessities cruise. Now, that's funny. That departed from Tampa uh, and sailed around the Caribbean. Uh, I just disembarked from a 2,000-person nude cruise. Ask me anything. He did an AMA on Reddit. Curious commenters quizzed the clothing-averse cruiser with one asking how many passengers had hot bodies. Cruises seem to be for people who like to eat and lie around, so there were a lot of large people, the man admitted. Also, most people don't seem to be comfortable being nude in public until later in life, so the crowd was older. I'd say 20% attractive, 20% average, 60% unattractive. He that's added probably that life, though, isn't it? Don't you think that's, <laughs> that's probably a, a pretty standard, that's what it, the world is? You think that the world is 60% unattractive? <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe naked. I don't know. That's what I'm saying, too. It's like he added that a majority of the passengers were American, but noted that some were from Europe and Australia. <sighs> I I mean, can I tell you, I was in Canada recently, mm -hmm. and I was, like, goofing around I came with people in the audience, you know, and, like, uh, and then a lot of people turn out to be uh, swingers. And in Canada? In Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Like every show, 
I would be like, who's there are swingers in the last show? Any swingers? People openly clapping. I'm a swinger. And it was like bizarre. Then I did the, I went to Tampa, Florida a few weeks later. Same thing there. A lot of swingers. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like, um, but then a lot of like it happened, all this kind of naked, they all had orgies and stuff. I think it happens a lot, but I think it's not all attractive people that's it's happening with, I think. So yeah. I think 60% unattractive works. Thank you for your time. Here's the thing. I think what happens on the naked cruise ship should stay on the naked cruise ship. Oh, you think it's rude that they did yeah. it? It's disrespectful. But also, he's right. You know what I mean? But it doesn't need to get out there. Because what if you're on that cruise and you're like, I had a great time. And then this guy's writing about you. And then you're like keeping yourself up at night. You're like, was I one of the 20%? Was I part of the 60%? You but, know? But it's a higher compliment if you're part of the 20%, though. Yeah. So like, it's like with without, e what's the line from South Park? The movie without evil, there must be good. Without there, there can't be good without evil. Whatever. Thank you. Yeah. So like, you need ugly people to be attractive. And you know what? Everybody's perception of beauty is different. But then there's actual ugly people. But some people are attracted to them too, though. So I guess that makes them attractive. Those are different. Attractive and beautiful are different words, different mm -hmm. things. You know what I'm saying? Like, like, like Betty is beautiful, but yeah. is she attractive to you? I mean, you're, she's a woman, respectfully. Uh, you're a gay man. That's it, completely, yeah. She's also three years old. You're not a... I, that three's too old for me. There's a lot of... <laughs> yeah. Justin. I'm sorry, I like my dogs young. <sighs> like, I don't know. I'm sorry, Betty. Have it's, you been on... It's not you, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> have I what? Have you been on a cruise? Yes, I have. Naked cruise? Not a naked cruise, but I did go to a naked port where it was clothing optional in Greece. And all my friends like dropped trout immediately. And I was like, ah, because ha, 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 ha. I'm like, I don't know. I don't like being naked. I like being naked, but not like. Naked parties is a round. I think it's people who don't have, like, we're. I can speak for myself. I'm grateful I have stand up comedy. Mm -hmm. So I have my outlet for my attention, like going on stage. Yeah. And I that's get, your I, kink. I, yeah. 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 A lot of people can't do it. A lot of people can't be naked in front of people. And also I was performing on this cruise and I was like, I don't want people to see the talent naked. <laughs> you know what I mean? I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> that's very like valid. Yeah. But then that you but then you feel like because like how life is like everyone's naked except for you, you feel like the weirdo. Yeah. But then in reality, you're with a bunch of insane people. Mm -hmm. So I'm reverse John Cena. Whoa. So so there's like a different Illuminati out there. The and, clothed Illuminati. Wow. The ones that walk amongst us every day. Oh my God. I get that though. I don't know what we're talking about. Honestly. I think like everybody's level of kink is different. Like, I don't think being nude, like doing a nude cruise is nothing sexual. And maybe it is for some people, but I don't get it. And that's okay for me to not get. Yeah. If people are having fun, can I tell you what private event I was hired to perform for? You know how this business Does goes. Does it involve goat masks and cloaks? <laughs> it may have. I didn't go to that room. <laughs> but for anyone who doesn't know how- That was in North Hollywood. <laughs> Is that the oh, is that is that the show you did? So what's the how's the new Ice House doing? Well, well, it's a little different now. It might be high, but uh, <laughs> I, I, I was offered. Uh, this is how the business works. If they offer you enough money, where you just choose not to say no, you know, it's harder to say. Oh, no. Okay, I was invited to perform at a gay bear convention. Good for you. Yeah. How did that happen? I'm a talented guy and um, <laughs> they clearly found me to be talented. Do you and, have a big gay bear audience following? I think they watched America's Got Talent or something. And, and they, they were like, oh, we're a Taylord. Can, <laughs> can yeah. I tell you, I brought Aiko Tanaka. She was like the, she was like the, I don't know. She, I don't know. She was oh, like, was she there with you? She opened. She was like the Baloo of the Gay Bear Festival. They loved her. They were all about of her. Of course they were. And uh, I, th I thought I was going to crush it, honestly. And like, it's weird. It was the first time I ever felt like how women feel on stage, where they're not paying attention to me, that they, they just, they're just like objectifying me. Oh. And I genuinely had that feeling where I'm like, you're not even listening to what I say. But also, 
I'm not their type either. I was invited to the um, the orgy, which was flattering. I forgot. I really was invited to an orgy. You were invited to an orgy? The, the Big Bear Romp uh, orgy. Good shout for shout you. out. Shout out. <laughs> you should do it next year. I, uh, I've done bears. I've bear done, conventions? I've done bear week. Yeah. I've done bears. Provincetown. Bears are great. Um, Very nice guys. They were the sweetest people. Yeah. And it was funny, like... The guy, one of the guys, there's like a couple who kind of oversees it. And then the one of the guy's cousin, who's like a straight guy, who's like, yeah, I've been coming for 20 years to so just help out. I'm like, oh, ally. <laughs> oh, we love an ally. But it's so, they're just, they're just an ally to an orgy. But wait, I wasn't invited to an orgy and I'm not, I'm fine with that. I'm not like upset. But, you know, I want to know how that invitation came around. Like, did they just go, hey, Taylor, great job on stage tonight. We're going to go to this like... Can I fuck fast later? Can I can I share the term? Yeah. The term I was. Do you want to come to the fuck hut? Hmm. And they just rope off an area every night, and then I think a lot of uh, orgying happens. But Betty was with me, and Ica was with me. You I, have I to get a be, sitter. I have to, yeah, <laughs> I have to be a good role model. You yeah, know? like respect. Yeah. But you know, I got children there. You know, mm -hmm. nothing wrong with the behavior, but. Um, you know, like you don't want your kids to think you're doing that, but there's nothing wrong with doing it. You know what I mean? The respect to uh, everyone's lifestyles. Well, and also, I love the casual name of just a fuck hut. Yeah. Yeah. Because there's usually like a dick doc or a dick deck or... I don't know about all this. Yeah, that's like the 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 scenes in like Provincetown and like on a cruise, they have those... <laughs> they have those those air when you said exact. roped off i was like i know yeah yeah it's so it's one of those things <laughs> like it's the world's wild out there i'm the deck whisperer yeah i'm just like i i see you i hear you oh you okay yeah well i, I hope you had a great time at all these places i did it no not a good time no not i hit my head on the uh the pier i, I went underneath the dock and it was like oh my god because i saw what was happening and i hit my head <laughs> and then uh yeah that was i'm not gonna go into I couldn't anything do, else i couldn't do an orgy i, I like, can't either one person's hard enough honestly <laughs> that's a lot of focus just for one it's terrifying yeah i feel like i'm playing like whack-a-mole in an orgy where it's like oh, all right now you all right come here all right, get, oh, gotta get them all you know it's just yeah i never I, thank you for visualizing that for me you made yeah. it really or you're uh, playing like bop it you're like bop it twist it <laughs> crank it slap it poke it <laughs> grab it lick it fuck it like it's just very much that can you like let me know when i need sorry. to cover her eyes sorry. first before you do that kind of stuff Frida, Please. come here lay down Listen, <laughs> this is this is this is your father now. Uh, we have another story. Are you a big Harry Potter fan? I've been on the rides. I've never read the books or seen the movies. So you don't know anything. Don't tell me what happens at the end. Well. <laughs> no. Um. <laughs> I didn't tell. I didn't say anything. I read the books. Um, the rides kind of creepy, right? Yeah, I no, mean, that, that you were like an adult reading the books. Yeah, I was a grown person reading the book. Yeah, were you reading with the child so you guys could like? No, I just read them because everyone was like, "Oh my god, the Harry Potter books are so good." And I was like, "I'll be the judge of that." And then I read them and I was like, "Oh yeah, these are fun." But I wasn't like, were you just a fan of like what uh, J.K. Rowling feels about like about oh about how she what were we gonna say how J, how, how, does, how does jk rowling feel about what i don't know she's a good person right? yeah she's just weird right <laughs> didn't she write the whole series on like a napkin in the subway and she was homeless and now she's being a bitch i don't know everyone's out of their mind it's so i don't get it but anyways this harry potter actress uh her name was miriam margulies she is fantastic she played professor sprout she is just a fierce funny lesbian in real life i love oh. her yes um she has gone on the on the war path saying that enough is enough that adult Harry Potter readers need to get over it. It's over. Goodbye. So she says that, um, let's see her character, professor sprout taught students at Hogwarts, a uh, school of witchcraft and wizardry, a fictional boarding school of magic created by JK Rowling grade level pupils were enrolled to learn about all potions, spells, and even team building extracurricular activities such as Quidditch. However, professor Sprout's portrayer is done with anyone beyond their teen years, still being a super fan, super fan of the wizarding world. 
In a recent interview uh, with New Zealand's One News, the 82-year-old actress says, it's over. Harry Potter. I worry about Harry Potter fans because they should be over that by now. Um, She said it was a kid's show. It was 25 years ago, and it's for children. Seemingly genuinely perplexed that (laughs) those who love the films in their younger years would still be fans as adults. She continued sharing her point of view. They got stuck in it. What's their first night of fun going to be? I can't even think about it. No. So, like, people having Harry Potter-themed weddings, birthdays. Like, I feel it is part of society, I feel like. I feel like we're going to get to a point where you're going to be at a funeral for someone, and they're going to be like, this was Jim. He was a family man. He loved his kids. He was a Hufflepuff. (laughs) You know, like, that's going to be... And they'll be like, "Mm, I get that. It's iconic. Yeah, I get... Yeah, Jim was total Hufflepuff. <laughs> he was total. That makes sense. Like they love it. Yeah, I. It's. I mean, is she is she typecast? Like, has she not gotten work outside of this? No, she's worked. She's fine. She's yeah, I fine. just think. I just think she's. It is. It is kind of an insane. Is, why are you upset? Not you, her. No, but like, yeah, uh, Justin. Why you? No, yeah. but like, but you sign up for a cameo where you yeah. know your super fans are gonna go on there and want you to refer to things as super fans from. Then you get mad. You sign up for all of this, well, and you're yeah. also doing great. Yeah, I people agree. are just happy and feeling joy. Like uh, you, you're you're in an iconic thing. You're everything's okay. Yeah, and I feel like you can't tell people not to be super fans about something. There's someone's gonna be a super fan of anything. You know. Um, it came out when we were kids. You know, it was Lee, like, I swear to God. No, yeah. I love Harry Potter. <laughs> I love this is the first You're time he talks. You're such a fucking Hufflepuff. <laughs> Are you a Hufflepuff? I probably no. I'm a Gryffindor. Oh, you're a Gryffindor. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> no. Which who did Haley Joel Osment play in it? Haley Joel Osment. I'm the Haley Joel Osment. Is he in that? No, Daniel Radcliffe. Jonathan Libnicki. No. You're you're just naming seen, children from movies. I've seen Home Alone one and two. That's Macaulay Culkin. I've seen The Sandlot. Uh huh. I've seen. Um, you don't know. I've seen. Um, I think I saw. What was that Frankie Muniz movie? Special Agent. I don't know. He's like Blank Check. No, I, I saw Blank Check. Blank Check was good. It's so good. It was a good one. Um, I haven't seen the, the Harry Potter ones, but yeah, I support fine. their fan base. It is it is an insane, like, I feel like there is definitely, like, some fan demonium. You know what I like about Harry Potter World at uh, Universal Studios? You can go to the Boar's Head pub and just sit on the back and have a glass of wine. It's the best. Did you know that the ride originally was, like, 3D and then people... People got like, sick. People were vomiting. Oh, I know. Over the things. It's a lot. Yeah. They were just like, like just spinning around. I remember they closed it so many times because people kept getting ill on it. I mean, um, I, I think it's, I think she needs to chill. Also, or get off cameo. It's just like, why well, make these videos for people? I think she's not doing the career she wants. And I think, she, I think she's, well, she's up. also 80 something years old. You know, it's also like, but like, you can't tell people to be like, get over it. It's like, what? Yeah. I think it's just like the super fans where people are theming their weddings and gender reveal parties. And I'm going to have a muggle. No, I'm going to have a Slytherin. You know, it's <laughs> let's put the sorting hat on the baby. Like what? <laughs> This is my forever baby sorting hat. <laughs> so weird. All right, we got to get going. I got to get you out of here. Tell everybody, this has been so fun, by the you're way. You're such a joy. Can I tell people? What? I look at this what? camera. Yes, yeah, so you're going to look at the camera. This guy is so special and Aww. so funny. And uh, he's a great talent and a great human. Am I looking the right? Should I look in that no, camera? you're good. You're in the right Should you I do it again? Just... <laughs> right. There you go. Um, but I'm so grateful to be here. And uh, yeah, I have a film, the comedy special, the comedy store, just like you did. Yes. And I'm really proud of it. If you go on YouTube.com, look up Taylor Williamson live at the comedy store. It's like 30 minutes ish. Best jokes I ever told. I'm on tour all over the place. TaylorWilliamson.com at Taylor Comedy. Mm-hmm. Check it out. Come see me live and uh, leave a comment. It helps a lot. And this is a hard business, you know? It is. It um, is. But like, I'm, we're putting out stuff we're proud of. And that's. Uh, we are. Are you doing the. Uh, the Netflix festival? Yeah. What dates are those? You know? Uh, May 12th, I'm uh, doing a show. Netflix is a joke comedy festival in Los Angeles. I'm also on tour in, uh, all over Irvine this week, uh, week and 
uh, Oxnard and um, Appleton, Wisconsin. Good, and, good, uh, good. Uh, DC area and Seattle area, a lot of Spokane all over America. Just, you know, perfect. Got to give Betty the life she deserves. Yes. One day she'll have pants, maybe. What's that? One day she'll have pants, perhaps. <sighs> I'm offended that you brought a naked dog on. Uh, <laughs> she can't afford pants. She, well, no, it's okay. No, they gotta go. They gotta go potty. You know? Go potty. All right, Taylor. Thank you for being here. We'll see you next time on the Just Saying podcast. Have a good one. Bye. Mm-hmm.